What's up, YouTube? Genji Gadget, and uh, I'm back in college. See, ooh, dorm room. What's up, Shannon? Hi. Um, that's why I've been a little deficient on videos, also because of the interactive experience from the local on Saturday, which I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I've been starting the semester, that's why I haven't got a lot of videos up. But I'm going to deliver the card of the week just a little bit early today so that uh, I can go home in peace tomorrow. Probably won't post a video tomorrow, but Friday, Saturday, and probably Sunday I'll have videos, at least one. I'm going to try and record some extra footage for the week to come. But for now, this week's card of the week is Light and Darkness Dragon. It's not necessarily something that's incredibly underrated or overrated or anything, actually. It's, it, everybody knows it's, it's quite a legit card. And I'm going to explain a few of its strong points, especially in decks like Fish OTK and Frog Monarch, which they are already played in. Um, also, I want to make a case that it could be played in Debris Plant, because you have lots of extra advantage, abuse of tokens, you're drawing cards of formula. If you sack a formula for Light and Darkness Dragon, you're going to waste at least two of their cards getting Light and Darkness Dragon off the board, but... When he goes, he's going to bring back something, and if you're a Debris Plants, you have Brionic, Scrap Dragon, Stardust, and all that could be dead, and Light Darkness is just another monster reborn after eating some of their cards. So, that's always a plus. Same in Frog Monarchs, it recreates field presence off a field that you didn't lose. And Fish OTK, more people are playing Caius than Light and Darkness Dragon, but this is definitely a possibility because being... A a combo deck, you need to get your combo pieces in order before you can, uh, you know, go off, win the game. And this is a good way to eat your opponent's advantage, eat their back row, get rid of things that may stop the Coelacanth. And um, overall, a really good card. I've had a lot of great wins and great losses because of this card. Um, if it comes down at the right time against Gravekeepers, there's not a lot they can do. If someone True Nade Light and Darkness Dragons me, uh, when I'm playing my Gravekeepers, I don't have a lot of responses because if I can't warning it or make a bottomless chain to get rid of it right away, I have to waste, like, multiple, multiple cards to get rid of it because Descendants Effect eats a card, and then Light and Darkness Dragon just eats that anyways, and it's a separate chain for Recruiter, so Light and Darkness eats that too. I don't get any advantage, and, you know, neither will other Gravekeeper players. So that's, a uh, really strong case to play Light and Darkness Dragon against Gravekeepers. At least try it out, see if it works for you against your particular Gravekeeper opponent and against any other deck really because some decks aren't running a lot of back rows these days and that's big for Light and Darkness Dragon because then they have to use monster effects and spells and a lot of spells are really important. People hold on to cards like that so you know lots of good stuff. Lots of key points about Light and Darkness Dragon, so hopefully you already know how good he is, and maybe you'll take a second look at trying him out, or, you know, not tell your friends that he sucks, because he doesn't. So, uh, leave your comments below, and we will talk to you soon. Peace out, YouTube.